Your forgotten memories from your first year of life are impacting how you act every single day. Have you ever wondered why you can't actually remember your first birthday? Well, you're not alone. Only about 1% of adults can. If you can't remember it, how can it be impacting you now? Okay, so I've just been going through some old photo albums to try and see if I can remember anything from between zero and two. I can remember the feelings. I remember feeling happy and things, but I do not remember any of these. Not even this delicious ice cream. You see, while your brain doesn't store the specific events of your early years, it does store the emotions that are associated with them. These emotional memories play a crucial role in forming your personality, your response to stress, and also your attachment style to the people around you. So in this video, we're going to explore the depths of your emotional memories and understand how they continue to influence you throughout your life. Plus, I'll share some practical tips to help you build healthy habits to process these emotions better. I'm Jack, I'm a doctor in the UK, and let's get into this. A baby just can't do much of anything for himself. Of course, as we grow older, most of us begin to strike out for ourselves. Shut the fire. Just about strolling. This graph gives us a key insight into how our memories work. But first, we need to understand the difference between episodic and emotional memory. Episodic memory is like remembering each episode of Friends in vivid detail, scene by scene. It's about the specifics. An emotional memory, on the other hand, is about how those episodes made you feel. Episodic memory is stored in the hippocampus, this part of your brain. Emotional memory is stored in this part of your brain, your amygdala. Now, this graph shows us something very intriguing. The neurons in the hippocampus aren't ready to store memories during early childhood because they're busy generating about 700 new neurons every second. Think of it like a wild spring break in Miami or a holiday in Zanti. A lot of reproduction, not a lot of memories. Meanwhile, the amygdala is diligently recording how you feel. It's capturing your sense of security, your fear and your happiness. These emotional memories then form the building blocks of your attachment style and how you respond to stress later in life. By the age of two, as we start to use language more effectively, our ability to store memories improves with it. With a vocabulary of about 50 words, we're beginning to describe and encode our experiences, helping to form more detailed memories. Understanding this process helps explain why our earliest memories are more about feelings than facts, and how those early emotional experiences shape who we become. So how do those childhood memories actually impact your adult life? Did you know that your early childhood memories stored deep in your brain play a crucial role in shaping your personality? One key part of this is your attachment style, how you connect with family, friends, colleagues, and romantic partners. It's fascinating how these early experiences form a significant part of who you are. Let's break it down with some characters from Friends. So Joey, he's the epitome of an avoidant dismissive attachment style always self-reliant, keeps things casual, and avoids vulnerability. Monica and Chandler, on the other hand, are the gold standard of secure attachment. They have healthy conflict resolution, stability, and mutual trust. What about Ross? He's got the anxious, preoccupied attachment style, especially with Rachel, always fearing abandonment, leading to jealousy and overdependence. How does that attachment style impact how you respond to stress? Here's a stat that might surprise you. Around 70% of securely attached infants grow up to handle stress better. If you've had a caregiver who responded to your cries with attention and support, you likely developed a sense of emotional security that helps you navigate stress in a positive manner. Understanding how these early emotional experiences shape our adult behavior highlights just how much our early years impact both our well being and relationships. Oh 
but can we have any impact on these now that we're no longer infants? The research shows that yes, you actually can. If you want to respond more like Chandler and less like Ross in certain situations, you can look into attachment-based therapy. This type of therapy helps you explore how you react in certain situations and trace those reactions back to their roots. The emotions that your amygdala has stored aren't easy to access, but by working from where you started to how you might respond, you might be able to work out why you respond the way that you do. I'm always looking to help you build healthy habits on this channel. So how can you start understanding your attachment style? A good first step is taking this quiz from the attachment project. It'll help you understand which attachment style you have. Once you understand your attachment style, here are some healthy habits to help you work on your emotional responses. So there's no self-development without self-awareness. So reflecting on your reactions to different situations may be helpful. Asking questions like, how can I communicate my needs and feelings more effectively? And a question like, do I tend to withdraw or cling in stressful situations? I always try to do this because I'm far from perfect. I definitely respond badly sometimes and especially under stress and pressure. The next step is to communicate openly with the people around you. Discuss what you need from them and what they expect from you. Building relationships on mutual understanding can provide a supportive foundation for you. If you need more help, then visit your doctor. They can refer you for attachment-based therapy or other types of therapy to support your mental health. Your forgotten memories from those early years are silently influencing your actions every single day. Understanding these connections offers powerful insights into who we are and opens the door to positive change. And remember, by reflecting on and addressing these emotional roots, you can shape a healthier, more secure attachment style moving forward. On this channel, we dive into understanding our health and building healthier habits with that knowledge. Now that we've explored your childhood memories, aren't you intrigued by how junk food could be impacting both your mood and your memory? Check it out here and subscribe for more insights just like this.